Absolutely. I think, it, yes, it will affect it all, and you can see that it is challenging already. I mean, the, uh, we look at a, a range of challenges. They're the individual challenges, the things that people are feeling on the inside of themselves, the insecurity and the anxiety, and in many cases, depression. And you alluded to it earlier. Many people are struggling, and they're need to, they need to take medication and things just to cope. And that's at the personal level. Then you have the societal level. You can see many of the social systems, the very things that we've relied upon for security for a long time are beginning to crumble. Things like the financial system and the financial crisis that we're in right now and have been through for the last year or so. In the United States, the healthcare system. Around the world, things like the governmental systems, the legal systems. We have wars. We have terrorism. We have all this happening where we have this huge divide between people who have a life where they have food, clothing, shelter, and transportation, and billions that don't. All this is coming to light more strongly now. Then we have the, uh, the challenges with the Earth itself, the weather pattern changes, the geological changes, volcanoes, earthquakes, all these various things. And all of these things are being exacerbated by this dimensional shift change. Now, I know I've just laid out a terrible scenario. <laughs> Let me please uh, offer, the, you know, offer you and the listeners another, another viewpoint. These things are being impacted by the choices that we are making. They are larger than what we are doing, but we are influencing these things. It's the choices we are making collectively as a global species, so to speak, that have an impact on the Earth itself. The good news is, is that millions and millions and millions of people around the world are making good choices. They are moving into the new intelligence. They are changing the way they believe. They're changing their lifestyles. They're changing how they treat one another. And new intelligence is emerging in people. And I see this everywhere I go. I certainly see it in Europe. I certainly see it in Scandinavia. I certainly see it in Sweden uh, when I'm in Sweden. This amazing new intelligence is emerging. So I am a very hopeful person. I'm a pragmatist saying, yes, we're going to face more challenges as we move along in the next uh, coming years. And that's going to be tough. But we're also manifesting a whole new social consciousness. It is going to put us in a position where we're going to have this new world. It's going to be a much better world than the one we live in today. And it will happen you know, in the not-too-distant future. So I'm a pragmatist and a hopeful person all at the same time. Mm. Uh, so what do you think people's, uh, if you will, responsibilities in all of this? Uh, uh, sh sh do you think that a big part of this is that we need to become more aware of, our, of ourselves, of our, our surrounding and so forth. And from that point of view, what I'm seeing right now, I, I, I'm a little bit more skeptical in that sense. I see that there's a lot of problems out there in one way. I, I reckon as well that this has to do with the fact of what you choose to focus on as well, obviously, uh, and what you, what you, uh, you know, decide to, to highlight, absolutely. But in terms of people's responsibilities here, if you will, uh, any comments on that, Howard? Yeah, Heinrich, and I'm glad you asked the question. It's actually a, a very mature question on your part. Yeah, we all have a responsibility. What's interesting about this time period and this dimensional shift is that it comes down to our individual self-empowerment or not. It's an individual process. The choices that we're making, whether we are choosing to operate from the unmanaged mind through the roar of ambition and survival, or whether we're really operating more from the true core hard intelligence that we have, is, is the choice. Are we uh, complaining and griping and fighting and angry all the time, or are we uh, more caring and compassionate? Simple choices like that, moment to moment, day to day, are our responsibility. And it is an individual game. It's becoming more and more that. I think, you know, a lot of people talk about the shift. They talk about 2012, and they, they see it through the viewpoint that there's going to be these big external events that create the change. And there may be external events, but the real change is going to occur as each one of us begins to make a shift in ourselves, to operate more from our higher principle and our higher dignity as best we can, allowing for our humanness, allowing for the challenges, but making an effort to do the right thing moment to moment, day to day, whatever that right thing is. And that is our responsibility. And it's also the greatest service we can do to the world today. The things that we do, the, the projects we're involved in, the business stuff that I do, all those things are important and they count. But the real truth, uh, most important contribution we make 
are those individual choices we make from the inside out. And that is our responsibility. And it's, it's an era of self-responsibility that we live in today. And uh, that's why I liked your question a lot, because it gets right down to the essence of it all. This is an individual choice about what we do or don't do. And those choices are what's dictating the speed of change. You know, Howard, we're, we're on this program also kind of, if you, if you will, conspiratorial oriented on this show. We, we sure. focus on the fact that there is a, a, a power elite as well. And, and from my point of view, when, when you mention all these things, the, uh, the question and the, uh, the, the thing that arises here is, is I don't think that they will let go of the, the easy, uh, that easy of, of their control of their system that they have in place. How do you see this in, in terms of the change that you're talking about? Do you see that th there's a strife going on or do you, do you see that these people in charge and so forth simply will change from within and follow along with this or, or any comments on that? Well, I don't really know. I mean, I'm, I find the conspiracy stuff interesting, um, certainly entertaining to me uh, when I hear about some of these things. Um, you're right, you know, it's, uh, people that are in power don't usually give up their power very easily. <laughs> And a lot of that's what's going on right now. It's, um, it's, you know, you see that the fight already taking place. And so what's going to happen in the future, I'm not sure. But I think that ultimately the momentum of it all will be so strong that, you know, things will change anyway. Uh, certain, certain things will just have to change, whether it goes beyond just what people want and don't want. Um, it'll get bigger than all of that. And I think that the systems will change over time. I also think that as as the people uh, began to express themselves in new ways, uh, it creates an effect and a change. I mean, you look at it now. We, the people themselves, have a great ability to communicate. You have this radio show. It's Internet-based. It goes all over the world. There's no limitation to this, for example. And there's a lot of things like that where we have a voice today. And those voices will get louder and louder. And as they do, uh, it will force change. People in power won't, won't let it go easily. They'll fight. They'll manipulate. They'll do everything they can. But ultimately, the rising tides of the people, I think, will win out. And I think it will produce a, uh, some massive change. But, uh, you know, again, when you look across the, the landscape of life today, it's easy to see that it looks like how are we going to solve these problems. And I admit, I can feel the same feelings. And it looks dawning sometimes, like how in the world is this ever going to shift? <laughs> Yeah, you know, I just see so much of that. I and it can it can bring me down sometimes. I just don't see sometimes how it can possibly work out. But then I find this place in my heart where I access something larger than self, and I access my own core power and my own intuition, and I begin to see it differently. I see it more hopefully, more open ended, and more possibilities begin to emerge for me. But I can feel both, just like anybody can, and that's uh, that's I say that with compassion because I go through the same thing. I do believe that you're that you're right on uh, that right note, Howard. That note. Uh, I want to ask you a little bit more about technology. You mentioned the internet uh, before here. Uh, what is your or uh, the, the HeartMath Institute kind of relationship with the, the technological development in all of this as well? With technology aid in this pro uh, process? I mean, you guys, for instance, have a lot of uh, technology-based products out there and so forth in order to aid along with this. Yeah, we do. Well, we have, like, you know, once we understood the heart-brain communication that I talked about earlier in the show, we, we wanted to know how could you improve it, and we began to study a field called uh, heart rhythm analysis. Its medical term is heart rate variability, and that gives you a measurement of the quality of communication between the heart and the brain. And then we discovered you can improve that, and so we began to develop uh, technology that can measure changes in the heart-brain communication, and then use uh, those measurements uh, to train us how to improve the communication between heart and brain. And so the state that we were improving is really something I referred to just briefly earlier called coherence, a highly ordered, highly synchronized state. So we developed the M-Wave technology. That's E-M-W-A-V-E. -E. It comes in uh, computer-based versions as well as handheld versions. Now, the M-Wave measures the subtle changes in our heart rhythms. And it scores those changes to determine how coherent they are. Low coherence is normal. High coherence is optimal. And you can see this happening on the screen. You see the heart rhythm patterns on the screen. You see the coherence levels changing. And you use this technology to learn how to improve your heart and brain coherence. It's powerful technology. We sell the M-Waves, hundreds of thousands of them really all around the world. They're available uh, 
you know, in, in many countries, we sell them in over 75 countries. Uh, I know if you're a lot of your listeners are in Scandinavia, HeartMath Scandinavia, uh, HeartMath.se. You can see the M ways there on the HeartMath Scandinavia site, and you can learn more about them. It's a little difficult to describe, uh, but they're, it's simple technology, handheld and computer based. Um, people from all walks of life use it. Uh, it's used by Olympic athletes, professional golfers, uh, business people. Lots of health professionals, medical professionals use the M-Wave technology. Um, hundreds of thousands of people interested in their personal and spiritual growth use it. Um, it's become quite popular. It's in a sense a form of biofeedback, but it's different than brain biofeedback. It's really heart biofeedback. 